Nelson Nightline will look at some of the questions of crime in our growing community. Our in-studio interviews with uh, police and social workers will focus on the problems of community safety and crime. If you have any thoughts about this subject, please pick up the phone, call us and join in the show. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome again to Nelson Nightline, Shock Cable's live bi-monthly phone and talk show. I'm Maurice Aitlin, and I'll be your co-host tonight along with Marianne Vaughn. Statistics Canada this week released census figures that show Nelson is the fastest growing community in the regional district of the Central Kootenai. The city's population has grown 7.7% to 8,760 people, up from 8,130 just five years ago. But along with the positive benefits of a growing population come a variety of less positive changes, ranging from a shortage of affordable housing to presumably a higher crime rate. On tonight's show, we have Nelson Police Corporal Bruce Halstead and Community Service Center street worker William Zamanity as guests. We will be asking them their views and perceptions on crime and giving you, our viewers, the opportunity to express your thoughts and opinions on the subject. The phone lines are now open. The phone number to call is 354-4200. But before we start, I'd like to welcome Corporal Halstead and William Zamani and my co-host. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening. Marianne. Good evening. Well, I guess we'll just start off off the top. I, I talked about the stats going up, and just before the show, we were standing there. We had a, a rise of 7.7% in the population. Assuming, assuming that, I would have thought crime had gone up a lot, too, just just by the numbers game, man. Maybe you can tell us what, what your stats are in relative to five years ago and within the next last couple of years. Actually, our uh, crime rate seems to be keeping pace with the rest of the province, as well as with the population increase. We're not having an overwhelming number of, uh, just because our population's increased, we're not getting a uh, large increase in crime rate. We're just we're getting keeping the basic same crime rate relative to the population. So as the population increases slightly, so does the crime rate increase slightly. So proportionally, it's been the same percentage-wise. Uh, as more people are coming in, we have more crime, but percentage-wise, uh, give correct. Take a little, the uh, yeah. provincial uh, figures are 147. Uh, criminal code uh, offenses per thousand and Nelson is 151 so we're right in the ballpark of the provincial average. Is that a good average? Yes. 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 What were you saying before the show Bruce about that's based on the old census of 1986 and when the new one comes out it will drop? Yes all our figures up to now were based on the 1986 census so next year it should show a decrease because of the population increase it sh mm -hmm. should show a slight decrease because our population's increased because it'll be based on the new census figures i think there might be a perception out there that crime has increased simply because of the coverage by the nelson daily news and whatnot there seems to be an increase in it is it just the reporting and and that public awareness that that both of you i think are are trying to to educate the community as to what's happening? Yes. Um, the Nelson Daily News has undergone some changes and they actually came to us and asked us if we could give them more than just what we thought was interesting. Give them the statistics for the day. And uh, they want, their their focus was to try and make the newspaper more of a community newspaper, they said. and. Uh, as a result, we've been giving them the um, stats and what's taken place over the period of time, and they've picked out of it what they saw fit to be newsworthy. Uh, I guess a policeman becomes cynical and looks at things, and it, it's old hat, it happens every day, and we don't view it as news. Uh, but the public certainly does, and we've had very good feedback since this program started, since the newspaper started printing it, because it is letting the people in the community know what is going on relative to crime in their community. 
But just to know that that is a concerted effort between the two of you, because about a week or so ago there was three headlines on the front page, and not knowing that that was a, a campaign to Public to awareness. increase the awareness, yes. it was you know front page. It looked like a real campaign. crime wave had struck Nelson, mm -hmm. and that was the comment that we got. Uh, but actually, no. Um, we are, are, like I said, our crime hasn't increased significantly. It's gone up with the population. But uh, I think I think it's a good move both on the police department's part and for the community. It's good for the community to know what's taking place just to be able to do uh, ordinary prevention. What, what about the types and severity of, of, of crimes? Has that changed at all? I mean, we, we again, through the media, all the media is here about uh, the family disputes that end up in murdering of a family, and we've had some something like that happen just recently, I think, in, in the Nelson area. At least it's under investigation. But ha has the cha has there been a change in the types of, of crimes going on in the past few years, uh, locally? Uh, no, no. I think uh, when we get periods of recession, we get increased periods of violence, family violence. It'll often increase. But the public is much more aware today of those type of things, and the education process is much better. Um, government has been very strong and committed to uh, family violence uh, countermeasures, and uh, people know that assaults and uh, sexual assaults and these type of behavior things are not tolerated in our society anymore and that they will be dealt with. And there is strict policy set out by the Attorney General for police to follow in the investigations of these matters. So uh, I think uh, when we have some downsides, certainly there in, we'll have increased alcohol consumption and uh, people get frustrated and vent their frustrations in various ways and we will get a minor increase in family violence. But generally speaking, I think uh, people are learning that it's not acceptable in society today and and if the break the rules of society, they have to pay the punishment. Mm -hmm. William Zev, <clears throat> maybe before we get into some specific questions with you, uh, you can explain what your job as a street worker is. Uh, you're with Community Services Center, right? Right. right. Yeah, if you can give us a brief understanding of what you do on the street then. Okay. Uh, first of all, it's important that uh, the community realize the fact that uh, I'm not on the street to enforce the law. Mm -hmm. I'm on the street to be a friend to the street kids though they know that we're not partners in crime, but we are friends, we are buddies. I'm the link between these kids and the rest of the community. So they know that I'm there for them and uh, they can rely on me at any time. So my job is to link them with the rest of the community, depending on their problems. So you, you're out on the street uh, on day or a night shift, you have different shifts, I guess, where you go out and pound the beat just like uh, Bruce or the other policeman will do, uh, right. except not looking to apprehend anybody, but to, to talk to them and find out why they're on the street. Well, not necessarily why they're on the street, but uh, to be with them wh wherever they are. It's my job to hang out with them. That's how they can come to me to let me know exactly what their problems are. And from there, I take it up. And you would then, then do what? Uh, refer them to the proper okay. agencies. I Depending on their problems, yes. that I refer them to appropriate agencies. Okay. Okay. There seems to be an increase in um, how young people are now that are dealing with the police or even Williams, maybe you could respond to how young the, the kids you're dealing with. A 10-year-old boy threatened a 9-year-old girl with a knife. Uh, recently five youngsters were caught, I believe, um, to do with some, some vandalism and two 12-year-olds down at KFP. Is there um, an, an increase in that age group, which seems awfully young. Uh, I don't know if there's an increase in, in that age group, but uh, I've seen in the past that 10, to 11, 12, 13 year old have been involved in vandalism, have been involved in shoplifting, but I'm not aware of, the, of that knife threatening situ uh, situation. Um, mostly the, the problem with the kids in nursing uh, they felt that they have nothing to do, according to them, even though there are some uh, facilities out there where they can go to and uh, do whatever they want. It appears to see that uh, all they want to do is just to go to a place where they can hang out with their friends and do whatever they want to do without any adult supervision. Okay. Um, 
I haven't really seen any any major crime committed by the youth here, rather than shoplifting, um, vandalism, break and enter. What you would consider petty crime? Uh, is that? Uh, well, <laughs> in the overall picture, yes. But uh, when you talk to the business people, small business people that lose high percentages of their gross through shoplifting, um, through organized shoplifting, as a matter of fact, uh, to some degree, um, it really hurts them. It doesn't take very many things to uh, really hit the net profit. We've uh, apprehended some young teenage girls, as an example, that had gone into a whole chain of stores in town and taken very expensive items. And we had bags and bags of goods that were recovered from these uh, and this is organized, people. you're saying? They, they've planned well, it to, Yeah, they plan it out uh, uh, with themselves yeah. uh, in, in a group, a group setting. So is that on the increase, Bruce? And, and what age level would that be? I don't think it's on the increase. I think people are more aware of it. Many businesses oh. really didn't know how much they, they lost. But when times get a little tougher, I think they have to be uh, better bookkeepers mm -hmm. and uh, more responsible. And we do run uh, shoplifting and fraud seminars for the business community to try and make them aware of it and, and give them some advice as to loss prevention as well. In terms of the retailers, the stats you provided us uh, a week or so ago, it should check frauds were up 600% from last year. I'm sure that impacts on the retailers, of course, as well. as. But remember, that's the reporting situation. As we, as we educate people, Many businesses didn't realize that they could call us, that it was a criminal offense, in fact, mm -hmm. to write an NSF check. And now when those people call us, that creates a statistic and creates a new file. And the, okay. and the people that we've talked to are now coming forward to the police asking for assistance in prosecuting. They're letting us be the clearinghouse mm -hmm. for these type of offenses. So your public relations program is, is actually working by the increased stats? Yes. Yeah. It can be very misleading in that it'll increase your stats to start with, but then it'll level out and then you'll see a drop as people become more aware and they start their prevention programs. So do the both of you work very closely together, I would anticipate. If, if William, if you do see a problem or, or something's happening, is there much? William is not a stool pigeon for no, the no, young I people. Wasn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. He, uh, he has to have their trust. But we have worked with William in the past uh, uh, on a couple of occasions when he's had uh, youth that were in real dire straits as far as a um, suicide attempt or threatening yeah. suicide was concerned, and he was looking for their welfare. And they respect him for that. There's no animosity gained, and we certainly appreciate him so on the So having street. a street worker is, is, a, is a help and a, and a plus to, to the police department because he's trying to at least get the kids to, into the right direction rather than in your direction. <laughs> correct, correct, yes. yeah. yeah. What do you both see as some of the priority issues surrounding the, the topic that we're discussing that face Nelson in terms of opportunities for, for the youth, as you say, they're looking for, for some place to go or, or something to do, mm -hmm. that the community can get behind and, and try to help facilitate? Okay. It's, it's always been the, the case that the, the youth always complain that they need place, I mean, they need a place other than the arcade which they have at uh, the Silver Bullet and uh, the, the, um, the skate park on Lake mm -hmm. Street. They've been telling me that what they needed is a youth center type of facility where there are different types of uh, recreational activities where they can go to and uh, do whatever they want to do with minimum su adult supervision. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that the city has done a lot by providing the, the skate park, but uh, not many non skateboarders go there. See, when you tell them that, well, we have a skate park, we have the arcade, or I'm not a skateboarder, and they won't go there. So they, they need a bigger place, like a youth community center. Is there not a group of parents who are trying to achieve just that, Williams? And if so, what stage are they at with that? And, and do you know who they, our viewers could contact to help out? Um, well, the, 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 the SHRED, S-H-R-E-D, it's an organization that was formed by a group of parents, and the outcome of that is the skate park. I don't know if there has been a group of uh, parents f trying to, to, to do something about the youth center well, there's, yet. There's, I thought it's that same also, group. 
uh, we, we, sorry to interrupt, but uh, there's also the uh, Nelson Boys and Girls Club mm -hmm. trying to get off the ground. I think they worked with Shred together mm -hmm. to initiate the skate mm -hmm. park, and that's serving a purpose. And there's, there's still hopes, I think, of developing a, a Boys and Girls Club for other, other children. I think we're going to just break for, for a moment to our first street uh, interviews, Marianne and uh, gentlemen. Uh, we'll return in about seven minutes to continue on with uh, Williams and... Bruce, and if you have any questions or if you have any comments on crime in Nelson, our n number is 354-4200. We'd like to hear from you. I have no experience in that regard. Nobody's been stealing anything from my business that I know of. Mind you, everything is locked up. No, I haven't uh, had any shoplifting or touch wood, any residential thefts or anything like that. Absolutely. Yeah, just from reading the papers lately. And I live in the valley and I know it's it's getting bigger in there too. <laughs> Any yeah. personal experience at all? Uh... I guess I could say that my husband's the recreation coordinator in the Slocan Valley and they've just lost $1,500 worth of um, baseball equipment before the baseball season. Yeah, to theft. So do you feel as safe as, as you used to feel? No, I don't. No. Okay. Yeah. What is your sense? I don't know. There just seems to be a lot more people hanging around the streets and a, a lot of people with not much to do. And I think it probably is increasing. Do you have any personal experience of not feeling safe? or? I would want to walk around the streets alone at night, to be quite honest. And has that changed from... Oh, yes. Before? Yeah. It never would have bothered me 10 years ago. I wouldn't have given it a second thought. Uh, I've noticed a lot of uh, car breakings and enterings and uh, uh, homes being broken into, but probably no more than in the past, but it's probably... Uh, being reported more. <laughs> being reported more. Crime rate, oh yeah, it's picking up. It's lots. Yeah. As we're reading the papers, you know, it's pretty bad right now. It's always been pretty bad, but it's getting worse now. Have you any personal experience of, of anything to do with crime? Not any good banks over lately? No, not myself, <laughs> no. Yeah. I've had people sneak in the library through the theater and running up and down up there. The police had to go and get them to take them. They never smoked in there, the whole building would go down. Not really. I think maybe it's there, but we don't know it all. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, it's like so bad lately. Yeah. It's been so bad lately. You, it's getting worse, I think. Don't film me. Can, can you, yeah. you don't want to be filmed, okay? Uh, it, any, you know, any personal experience or, uh, you know, when you say it's bad, it's what? Not really really broken windows and stuff. Okay. You're hearing a lot. Yeah. You're hearing more? Yeah. Yeah. There's so much more available yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. Incredible. What does that to do with? Why is that happening? Is that more people? More yeah. people, greater demand. How about the bar scene and that kind of thing? Is that uh, you're probably me it's you're a little change. bit younger than that? <laughs> to me, it's sort of settled down. It's like when I used to live here before. It's like the bars were like the Civic Hotel used to be called the Zoo, and you know, it's like when you were a kid, it's like oh yeah, and bikers and like big tough guys. Now, now it's just like everybody can go there and have a good time now without being beat up or anything. So. Well, oh, geez, you got me there. I, I don't really know much of crime here, but the thing is, I'm not really from here. That uh, uh, okay. I don't know what time. But I can't say so. No. I came from Surrey. There's lots of crime out there. <laughs> uh, uh, so I figure there's a little more now than before, since it's growing more. Something like, well, now it's actually like the police force are out more than before. Change, yeah. Definitely, there's a change. More, more than before, more than years ago. Like, there's more people coming in, more like more teenagers now. And, a lot of breaking entries or what have you. There is a, a lot. Okay. Um, from the articles I've read in newspapers and just from talking to police officers that I know, I think as the population grows, it is increasing. And there's been a lot of, well, I shouldn't say a lot, but there's been some crimes lately that I wouldn't have expected to see in a small town. It's certainly a lot better than Vancouver, like where I came from, but I think it is increasing. Could you give examples of that? Uh, the things that were, were different. Um, a girl that was assaulted with a beer bottle by some guy off the street. 
somebody was punched in the face when he was driving a vehicle and someone came up to them and disconnected the car and punched him. Um, another man who was apparently assaulted downtown here by an unknown assailant for no reason other than just to beat him up. Things like that I wasn't expecting to find here and I, from the sounds of things they are increasing. I feel it's increased. Any experience or any examples that you can you could think of? That isn't as safe anymore. There's been lots of thefts from vehicles parked in the yard and of lawnmowers and that. Uh, not really. I don't know. So, some of the people that uh, see walking around the street are questionable, but I haven't noticed any now. Okay, good. It's, um, well, I live just up the hill and uh, it's well, it seems normal. So. so you feel as safe today as you did last year? Yeah, I think so. so I visited yesterday. We're from, a, <laughs> yeah, we're from a bigger town. He thought it was a. He said he thought it was a sleepy town. No, that's what he said. Those are the words exactly. Um, in terms of, we're from Penticton, so uh, for us, it's pretty safe. But, you know, it's. Uh, I'm sure if you're from Vancouver, Penticton would, would seem safe, and we're from Penticton, Nelson seems safe. So, so I guess it's all relative in that situation. So. No, I've lived. I've only lived in Nelson here for six or seven months now. From? Uh, from Balfour, just from Balfour. And no, I think it's a great place. I think eventually, with more people coming in from different places, from big cities, um, that the crime will probably increase somewhat. To what extent, don't know, but I, I think it will somewhat. Not in our area. I guess in town, what I read, sounds like it is growing. You have no personal experience with me? No, with any, any. not whatsoever. I've been here for about six months, but the, compared to Kelowna, it's, uh, it's very lax. I think that the people should just, um, if they're going to be doing drugs and booze, I think it should be left alone. It is more left alone here, and I think that's why it's more relaxed, more laid back, and there's a lot less crime about it. It's not as much of a black market. <coughs> I think it should be kept like that. And it's, uh, it's, as long as it's not out on the street or anything, it should be... Uh, I think it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it should be left alone, and I think everything should be alright. I can't say that I'm that in touch, Mike, with the, the news media, or perhaps, you know, in the know, to really be able to say. I know many people have commented recently on the fact that there does seem to be an increase in violent crime. Any personal experience at all with the... Uh, uh, no, uh, honestly, I, I can't say that I have any experience in that area. Good evening again, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Nelson Nightline. Uh, on tonight's show, we have Nelson City Police Corporal Bruce Halstead and Community Service Center street worker William Zomani as our guests, and we're talking about crime in the streets. Has it uh, uh, gone up or has it remained the same? I'll get back to, to you, Williams, uh, about facilities for the youth. Uh, there is the skate park, presumably that has taken some kids off the street into a place where they can skate skate on their skateboards and not have to worry about running into people and knocking mm -hmm. somebody over. Mm -hmm. But you said to us uh, just a while ago that they want something else. What what sort of facilities do you, do you see there being a need for in Nelson to keep another group of kids off the street, perhaps? Okay, like the skate park is a good place. Uh, the, the skaters have a, play, a portion of the, uh, of the whole building where they use their skateboard. There are areas where kids can just come as drop-in. And uh, the main floor is there for dances, to organize dances, but uh, they haven't got any permission from the fire department. So dances couldn't be, we couldn't organize dances in that area. If that is allowed, then that, that would solve some problem because like Fridays and Saturdays, there could be dances organized in those days where kids can go there. They won't see it only as a place, as a place for skateboarders. They see it as a place where they can come to and just hang around and dance. So that, that's being worked on, presumably, to get uh, approval from the city fire department to, to have nighttime activities there? Right. They're trying to get that. Just before we go on, I uh, want to ask for callers to call in. Our number is 354-4200. Uh, give a call in and you can have a chance to talk to uh, either Williams or Const uh, Corporal Halstead. 
What about yourself from your perspective, Bruce? Um, what sort of facility would you see being needed to get the types of kids off the street that perhaps are on the street and aren't skateboarders? Uh, a community center, a youth community center, certainly is a good idea. It has worked in other places, the uh, boys and girls clubs yeah. that have, uh, but um, contrary to what the kids want, there has to be a balance struck. Yes. Uh, they want no supervision or very minimal, and most places have found that there must be some supervision, a reasonable amount of supervision to make the places work. Because uh, even in the uh, kids' groups, there are... Uh, some kids that will try and spoil it for everyone. Very few, but it only takes one or two to cause a lot of trouble and spoil it. And the supervision has to be there to make the places work. Yes. But uh, the skateboard park, as an example, or the building has uh, been a great uh, thing for the kids, I think. It's yeah. taken some oh, of the problems off the street. Absolutely. We were having com continuous complaints, and now there are very few. Since our new bylaw came in, I only know of one uh, person that has been charged with, under the new bylaw where their skateboard was seized and they had to pay a penalty. Mm. So it is really working, I think. And just now changing the subject just slightly, though, <clears throat> when we were talking about population growth and the type of people coming in, and you said stats were proportionally flat, but what about the types of people coming in? You, you, have you noticed more bad guys? I think we talked about that. Uh, in with the, with the population, I would assume, again, something like that would, would happen. Uh, We've, we've uh, had some excellent people move into our community. Um, from um, east, from larger centers, looking at the change in lifestyle and the things that Nelson has to offer as a community, we can't, we're not like the Okanagan that we can be a weekend community. We're far enough away from the large centers. But with any increase comes undesirables. And we've certainly had some undesirables move in here. And um, being a smaller community, pres you presumably can at least identify them quicker. Uh, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> we hope so too. Yes. We think we can. We're yes. uh, uh, you, usually that type of person will come to our attention fairly fast. You have a call, I yeah, believe. We'll go to our first call. <laughs> no, lost him. Well, we'll try and get that caller back. Uh, the number is 354-4200 if you want to call in. Uh, we'd appreciate a call. Do you work with uh, the RCM police? They're, 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 uh, Bailiwick is obviously larger than Nelson, uh, although they're driving through town all the time to their headquarters. Uh, are you constantly on uh, communications with them and working together? Oh, we have that call. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> we have technical difficulties. We'll let Bruce answer the question. <laughs> Yes, we do. We work very closely. Uh, both forces work together. The uh, detachment area, of course, is the uh, Nelson detachment is the immediate surrounding area of Nelson, and we work very closely with them. And uh, we call on the RCMP's expertise in many areas uh, from time to time, and we give information, pass information back and forth, because it's absolutely important uh, in any community and in any. Um, police agency, just as we do with other agencies. There are interagency meetings that target on youth and target on crime problems. And uh, spousal assault, we have a spousal assault coordinator as an example, and we have interagency meetings in that regard. <coughs> and we have them on, on several youth that we've had to target and do some specific things with police, social services, etc., with uh, and the schools. Great. Those oh. kind of things work very well. Give that a I want another to talk try? Yeah, <laughs> about the Victim Services Unit when we come back. Good evening, Nelson Nightline. You're on the air. Yeah, hi. I have two questions. Is there a Crime Stoppers program in Nelson, and are there plans to implement a 9-11 service here? Okay, thank you. 9-11 is uh, being investigated. Um, I don't know where it's at, but it was being looked at last year. The cost is astronomical. There's no doubt that 9-11 will come uh, everywhere throughout the province in time, but it is very expensive to implement. Now the city, I, I think, pays for that, or through, uh, through the police force, I guess, would be budgeted for that. To, it's not a, a free service from BC Tel at no, all. It, no. You know, in Cranbrook, no. they were having uh, debates for two years trying to say how, how the, how the population is going to pay taxes on that. So yep. that's a problem with that. And it's very sophisticated equipment. Yeah. 
that goes into it to make it work properly and uh, it's it isn't cheap and I, I don't think we're going to see it in the immediate future what is the crime stoppers program the crime stoppers program presently is uh, in place in our area it's run a little bit different than it is at the coast uh, but we do have a crime stoppers program coordinated uh, through a member of the trail detachment and it's all through the Kootenays and operated through KBS. We do not have a reward system in place uh, for our Crime Stoppers. We depend uh, on the community at large and if it's a specific instance uh, for a major crime then we will offer a reward separate from the Crime Stoppers program. But the Crime Stoppers program that we have in the, through the radio station does not have a reward system but it has worked very well. We've had a lot of people phone in on uh, the various crimes that have been reported and uh, so that targeted that. So it's help, helping that. Uh, Certainly is, right. yeah. What, what about Williams? Uh, when you're out there uh, in, in the street with, with these kids, what, what do they say their, their problem is that they do vandalism? Uh, have you talked to kids and uh, they, they told you why? Yeah, whenever I ask them why these things, like these crimes are being committed, they all tell me it's, it's just something to do. For them. Uh, yeah. It's, it, some of them get a kick out of it, they say. And some say it's just something to do. And um, if boredom is the main reason why they're doing that, I've told them that, well, there are lots of places they can go to, even though they... They, they're not skate as, as they told me, that uh, they, they, they don't skate, so they don't have to go to the skate park. There, there is the silver bullet where they can go to and play some games and shoot pools. But boredom seems to be the main reason why they do this. So we got to have more activities locally for, 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 for our youth. Do you work closely with the school system as well, yeah. Williams, in terms of trying to set up activities or use their facilities for that that place they just want to gather at? Is that a possibility? Uh, you see, the, the kids have stayed about, spent up to seven, eight hours in school every day. Yeah. So the, the moment they're out of school, they don't want to be part of anything that right. has to do with school. They, they want to go to a place where their mind will be completely out of I mean, completely out of the school system where they can do whatever they want to do without having to go through the school process again. Or just even being in the actual building <laughs> kind of reminds <laughs> them of where they've been all day. Right. I wanted to ask you, Bruce, and Kate, for those that didn't read the paper today, that the Nelson City Police is launching a new, new program called the Victim Services Unit. I wondered if you could describe that a bit. I, it starts in June, I understand. We've uh, applied to the Attorney General for funding uh, both the RCMP and ourselves together on a joint project of police-based victim services. Presently we do have a crown-based victim services in our community that's operating. And um, the police-based victim services that we are applying for and it, uh, we're, we haven't received final approval for it, but the budgeting is in, in place from our end and we're just waiting for the approval from the province's end, but it does look like it will come, and we're aiming for the end of June for it to go into place once we're in our new building. It is a program that is going to uh, give immediate attention to victims of crime. As an example, if an elderly couple have their house broken into, it's hard to realize the trauma that they go through. It's the most important thing, it's probably the most major thing that's happened to that person or those people in their lives. And we look on it as just another break-in. But to them, it's all important. And the victim services will uh, steer them in the right direction to uh, get help as far as their insurance claim is concerned, who to talk to, how to prevent the crime from happening again, you know, what could they have done themselves to try and prevent it. Um, it may be as simple as forming a neighborhood watch program or, or having a better lock put on their door. Just things like that. But uh, it's to, to get immediate service to the victims of crimes that we often view as everyday crimes. And it'll be a referral agency as well, referring people for, on major things to the agencies that can help them. That, that bring, <coughs> brings up the subject of how, how people can prevent crime. Uh, 
I, I know we're, we're not supposed to keep the keys in our car with the car <laughs> running when we park, obviously. So, but what, what other little tips can you, you pass along to people to protect their property and themselves so nobody walks by and hits them over the head with a beer bottle like happened last year? Well, there are some things that you can't prevent. Yes. You know, relatively speaking, our, our streets are safe. They really are. I can assure the people in Nelson that generally speaking, you can go anywhere in our community and you don't have to fear. It's not an unsafe place for a lady to walk at night or, or a youngster or a man uh, to go by himself. Uh, some communities that can't quite be said to be true. We don't have any specific areas where it's a real problem. But um, common sense, people using common sense is the biggest uh, thing. Locking your doors. You know, it's not very many years ago when it was uh, almost a shame to have to lock your door. Mm -hmm. But now, it has it to be done now. Yeah, you've got to lock your doors, you've got to put things away, you don't leave your kids' bicycles laying out at the driveway because it's just an invitation for somebody to take an easy ride home. Those kind of things that make things preventable. And um, if everyone just uses common sense and takes a look around uh, kind of before they go to bed or before they go away. Uh, is, is there a, a neighborhood watch program? Uh, I know there's a sticker on, on my house door that says there's one and I'm not a member of it, so there might have been one in the past, but I've not seen any information about that. There, there is a program, and but it's on a, a need basis. In other words, if your, if your block has a problem or, or perceives a problem or wants to prevent a problem, it's as easy as calling the police department. The RCMP do the same thing in their area, and we'll organize a neighborhood watch. Uh, basically, you organize it. Yes. We come and talk Advise. to you. Uh -huh. Yeah. <clears throat> but you're saying there, there aren't any major problem areas in Nelson right now, fortunately. No. Yes. No, but uh, we have rashes of certain types of crimes. Um, summer coming, people often leave their windows open, and we'll have all kinds of car thefts, thefts out of cars just because they're crimes of opportunity. Mm -hmm. And a young, couple of young people will spot something, a radar detector as an example, or a stereo, and out it goes, and the next thing you know, they go to the next car and try the door, and the next car, and it happens, it goes down the street that way. So common sense can often prevent it. Now, if, a per, if uh, the same group of people want to go breaking windows of the vehicles to get into them on that type of a spree, there's not much they can do about it. Uh, except be good neighbors, and if they hear something or see something, phone in. Call the police. Have the police increased kind of walking the beat? I noticed them more walking along Baker Street and up on Victoria and Vernon and whatnot. We have a beat man uh, who's assigned to the uh, uh, beat uh, wherever possible, or whenever possible. Mm -hmm. We are really running thin. As an example, it's in excess of 12 years ago that the police commission said our police department should be 22 persons. We're still only 16. Um, our our uh, caseload increases continuously as our population growth increases, and we're really spread thin. Uh, it's almost to the point of where many of our uh, common things don't get the proper attention that they should get for a community police force. We're very fortunate to have a community police force that's, uh, we don't have to go out and set up neighborhood community uh, spots or stations within the community. We can uh, go to any of the agencies in town very easily and work on these things. So uh, it makes it quite easy. Great. We have another caller. Good evening, Nelson Nightline. Hello. I'm interested in Murray Zeitlin's attitudes tonight. Um, Murray, you seem to be quite pejorative when you're talking about the kids. You're talking about what can we do to keep them off the street. And I'm wondering whether one of the, I'm wondering if you could look at it another way. You guys in that studio are a peer group hanging out right now. That's what you're doing. You're hanging out. Um, you are um, doing the same thing in a different setting that those kids are doing on the street. They're hanging out. And it's a very important part of their development that they be allowed to hang out and that, that somehow we accommodate that requirement in their socialization rather than look at it as being a problem to us proceeding
dealing with our consumer-driven um, requirements. And so, you know, I'm wondering whether you shouldn't be asking yourselves, listen, what can we do to help them enjoy that rather than what can we do to get them the hell off the streets? Do you have any suggestions of what we can do as a community? No, I'm just wondering, and that's the question that I'm asking you right now. I'm, I'm concerned that your attitudes are judgmental and you're not looking at this thing from a sociological point of view. You're looking at it from strictly um, what is convenient for the people of Baker Street. Okay, thank you. I don't think we are, uh, Mr. Collar. Uh, we're, we're trying to find out, in fact, what is the situation, and we're also trying to find out what are the answers. We've asked William and, and Bruce if they have a, an, an answer, and we've asked you, and you don't have the answer, obviously. Everybody has to have a place to, to stay, uh, to hang out, whether it's people our age or kids or gangsters. I think he does <laughs> raise a point, though. It's yeah. not, we're not generalizing youth. I mean, there's lots of youth that are directed and, and uh, are, are not a problem. Mm -hmm. It's a very small percentage, I, I would mm -hmm. anticipate. Yeah, it's, uh, there are lots of uh, kids that just hang out on the street. These kids are not obstructing anybody. They're not, they're very harmless to anybody. And uh, all they want to do is just go out there and play with their friends, hang out with their friends. That does not say that, uh, uh, other crimes don't happen as a result of their hangout. Sometimes they plan on how to do whatever they want to do, and as a result, vandalism ha happens somewhere, uh, break and enter happens, and uh, shoplifting happens. But most of the time, they're just out there hanging out with their friends. It's a sign of our times too, though, isn't it? 20, 30 years ago, people did things as families and communities did more and there was a lot more interaction and things happening. I don't think you, you saw large numbers of kids hanging around the streets, say, th 30 years ago, or am I wrong? But I mean, in terms of how society has changed. I don't think the same. Uh, you know, um, 30 years ago, every kid had a job. There were jobs everywhere. Nowadays, there's lots of adults that can't find a job. Mm -hmm. Um, economic times have dictated two family incomes are an absolute necessity. They're no longer a luxury. It's a necessity to survive if you want to buy a house, mm -hmm. have a car, send your kid to college, etc. So you create you, the latchkey kid by trying to create a, a better sure, situation sure. for them. I think all of these things, uh, just as our last caller kind of stated, uh, society has changed and these things are all relevant. Mm -hmm. And the whole social system, the structure has changed. Mm -hmm. We're going to uh, go to our second set of uh, street talk right now uh, and get back with uh, Corporal Bruce Halstead and uh, William Zamati just shortly. It's a very spiritual place, though. There are lots of different beliefs here. So, yeah, people have different ideas, they discuss them. Are they talking about Christianity? Is that what it is? Well, would... Christianity versus other religions. Yeah. I think right now we're talking Spiritual. about truth and whether there's God. Yeah. Okay. So why are you doing it on, I mean, you know, normally when you hang out on the street corner, you're talking about doing a dope deal or something. I mean, it's not, it's yeah. not religion. But Nelson is kind of hard uh, Yeah? <laughs> there's all sorts of things that go down in Nelson. Yeah? That uh, may be one of them, too. <laughs> Personally, I've lived pretty far out of town all my life. I'd say it was a little safer then. I mean, it's always been a fairly friendly town. I'm sure it has this little Nixon here and there, you know. But all together, it's basically safe. No, different plot. I'll tell you, we got levels in Nelson. We got, uh, well, I mean, I guess like any other town, you got the richer class, right? Yeah. And then you kind of go down the line. But, uh, we've got a we've got a really good class of crazy people <laughs> that uh, accumulate on the streets. And not crazy, but you have some schizophrenics. Nice yeah. one. Really. You have some religious nuts. You know, you have people that are on drugs. <laughs> and you sort of wander around. It's pretty. Okay, so what kind of do you put yourself in? Uh, like you're not crazy, you're not schizophrenic, you're not on drugs. I assume. No. Actually, maybe I'm a little bit of each in <laughs> different times. Yeah. Well, I'm, no, I'm not schizophrenic. Oh, basically Nelson's turning into a tourist uh, trap pretty well, and with that comes transients and, and uh, people who want to basically fill up their money. 
from other people. So you feeling yourself sort of less secure than, than you would have done? Oh, certainly. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Any experiences of, of that um, kind? Not with myself, uh, but a lot of the customers are. Oh, yeah. this is just nothing. Yeah, this is nothing here. I'm probably used to work the bar as, uh, as a bouncer in Calgary. I know it's like, this isn't bad here. Yeah, well, it's up. It's up a lot, actually. Like, I never used to have to lock my doors and stuff, but since, you know, the last two years anyway, you know, I've, I've lost things out of my vehicle and stuff. Because, like, I'm not used to locking it up or anything like that. Now I do. And, I mean, I've lived here most of my life, and I've never used to have to do that. So. You're on a tag them now, is that right? Yeah. 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 But, you know, I was in town there about, oh, I don't know, five months ago, I guess, something like that. My vehicle, I didn't lock it, and it was broken, too, things like this. And that's the first time it's ever happened, so. So why is it? Well, with the city people that are coming in, they're bringing their, their little brats with them, you know. They, you know, that's what they're used to. They just hang out in the cities while they come here and they do the same thing here, right? so. I think it'll turn around. I mean, you know, you look at Nelson history and it's never, it's never stayed at that point. I, I, I don't believe it's gonna stay that way. Uh, I'd give it maybe two years and things will turn around and get back to normal. A bus might ah, be legalizing skateboarding in Hackensack, and that was a change. Yeah, that was good. No, 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 no we don't think so. No, that was lame. No, skateboarding fun. Yeah, they just like, I think the cops are just trying to legalize everything that's fun. Nelson. Good evening again, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Nelson Nightline, Shaw's live bi-monthly phone and talk show. I guess a lot of people are out watching the hockey game tonight. It's a quiet <laughs> phone line. If you want to phone in, we'd like to hear from you, 354-4200. If not, if there's anybody out there enjoying the show, that's great, too. We're, we're getting back to seriousness. Uh, you talk about what's needed. How can we, if, if it's youth crime, how, how, do, how do we get the kids on the right track? You've suggested, both of you, that a facility, we have a skate park that meets some of the needs. You're saying that at the, in the evenings or on the weekends it can be used for dances if, if you get proper uh, safety regulations with the mm -hmm. fire department. Community center, H how do we go about getting the right facility in town? Who puts that up? How is it accomplished? It's very difficult to uh, target that type of a facility because you're targeting such a small amount of people as uh, clientele. Uh, you know, we're a very sports-minded uh, community. Right. Uh, we've got all kinds of recreation. We've got boating, fishing, hiking, hunting, swimming, skating, curling, you know, right. to name many activities, uh, volleyball, badminton. So mar marketing a facility to one group is a, is a difficult problem. Very, very difficult. Uh, the, the, the facilities that we have in place market the majority of the community. And we're talking about a very small segment, albeit a needed segment. And it's, it has to be a complete community effort mm -hmm. to uh, target into those kids. I think we have a caller. Good evening, Nelson Nightline. Hi, yeah, I'm just um, wondering why you don't have any young kids on the show with you tonight. That would seem to be a, uh, a good opportunity to, to talk to these kids and let them talk to the community too. Thank you. We were hoping to, uh, to have, have a, a youngster on the show. But it doesn't always work out the way you want on a volunteer show. Uh, people don't always want to come, come on board. Uh, we might have one next time. We were also going to have the uh, RCM police were going to be here and they couldn't uh, make it for the whole show. So when, when you're doing a, a volunteer short, short show and with not a lot of prep, we can't always get everybody we'd like to. But I think that's a good idea. If perhaps maybe we bring you on again, uh, next time. Williams, with a couple of... Uh, kids that can explain from their perspective. Right. Uh, maybe we can bring on a couple of uh, hardened criminals again and you come <laughs> on with them. Are there any hardcore hardened criminals in the area? I don't see anybody in this area. I know we don't have bank robberies, <laughs> fortunately. Uh, Vancouver is a bank ca robbery capital of Canada, one of them now. Uh, what, what are the most serious types of crimes that we have to be aware of so, uh, that, that are out there? We've had a terrific uh, number in uh, the past few years of sexual assaults in our community. We've had some very serious assaults, um, assault causing bodily harm, you know, very serious ones. Victims of uh, violence, uh, 
have come forward in the past few years like never before. Uh, those are things that uh, we didn't look forward to in any community, don't look forward to in any community. We certainly don't look forward to them as police officers investigating them. But uh, when you look at um, major crimes like bank robberies, as an example, we've had uh, small rashes of armed robberies in our community. And we don't have to have very many. Two or three here gives us a... a Sa the same crime rate per capita as the larger centers, mm -hmm. just being uh, because of the size were. Uh, you know, a bank robber would almost be foolish to come to our community and rob a bank, but it does happen in smaller communities periodically, but you know, there aren't very many ways out of our community. <laughs> Good evening, Nelson Nightline. Well, oh, I'd like to ask the question about, do the, do the police ever consider uh, placing may, more plain clothes people on the street. Okay, thank you. Uh, absolutely. Uh, that's one of uh, our main priorities. We have two detectives right now. Um, we certainly know that we need two more. Uh, the chief is asking for one for sure uh, for next year, in next year's budget. But uh, we could use four people in our plainclothes division at all times. Now, some people have said, why don't you put people undercover with our drug problem, etc. But it's pretty difficult in a small community uh, to do this because all our police are known. Not only are they known, we want them to be known mm -hmm. within the community. So we have to bring in outsiders, just like the RCMP had a recent undercover operation. And those type of things work very well. But our plainclothes people are mainly designed uh, to be investigating our major crimes within the community. So it's not under, uh, plainclothes isn't undercover. No, it's, it's not undercover, titles, correct, I, correct. I, I, I'm wondering if, if what he meant with more undercover type uh, that's, operations. That's kind of what yeah. I read into yeah. it, but I could be wrong. Yeah. And, and the difficulty there is, is the visibility of the, of the 16 members of the force are, are, are there already. Maybe the first new guy that comes in uh, can go undercover for a short while, but uh, do we have enough serious crime that you need undercover? Is it, what would that be? From, from that, time to time, yes. Is that the drugs uh, related? Drugs to and uh, fencing of stolen property, those kind of things, certainly. Um, there's no question that we could uh, use more police officers in our community. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's all relative to cost. You mentioned you're moving to a much needed new facility in, in, in a few months. Do you have Long the capacity mm -hmm. to expand to bring you up to those? Uh, levels of police officers when, once you're in there? If yes, yes, that building uh, hasn't allowed for a lot of expansion, but it'll certainly uh, make a workable situation for everyone that's in there now. Right now we have, as an example, we have one room that is a locker room, a lunch room, a meeting room, a change room, uh, you name it, it's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You'll be sharing the building with the new library, and last year when this was all happening, <laughs> someone coined the term books and crooks, <laughs> which I thought was good. I just want to go back to the situation of the, uh, the youth center again. We say yeah. it's targeting a very narrow niche of, of people, but there are other narrow niches of people. The senior citizens would like a, a center. Um, I think there's a much needed possibly daycare center. I think so. Maybe putting there's a way together. of putting yeah, it all yeah. together and have a multi-use facility rather than trying to target all of these independent it just takes all these groups coming together mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a youth center it could be called a community center mm -hmm. where everybody is allowed, I mean uh, welcomed to come and do whatever they want to do enough space for, for, everybody, for everybody at different times can be booked in uh, for the uh, bridge club or, or for kids to listen to punk rock or whatever mm -hmm. are you in touch with the boy and boys and girls club Williams oh yeah oh yeah is, who would the contact person be for those watching that might want to get involved in trying to to participate in oh, getting Jack something Olson. going? Jack, Jack Olson, Olson yeah. right? He's, he's, he's with the Boys and Girls Clubs based at uh, City Hall. City Hall, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, one thing I would like to say before we wrap up is we're lucky here in Nelson that uh, we don't have that gangs yet mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something we should watch out for. I agree. If, if uh, or organized gangs causing right. trouble as a group, uh, right. you know, that's, how do we stop that? And just keep you on the street and 
give you your guys on the street to, to, to work two sides of the street, I guess. Uh, you can catch them before they get in trouble and try and educate them and put them on the right path and hopefully uh, catch them if, if they don't. <laughs> Is there only one of you, Williams? Yeah. The only one? And so I'm the you're, only youth work. You're probably in the same situation as Bruce says. You probably could use more colleagues working in Yeah. Uh, if if this I mean if this, the city sees the need for it, mm -hmm. uh, we have discussed that before, and uh, it's all it has been put on the population of nursing that the size of nursing doesn't require two street workers. But uh, if there's another person, possibly a grow, that would be nice. I think it's misleading too, though, the size of Nelson, because you just look at the city limits, and right outside we have a population equal to, if not larger. Very who short distance to who too. congregate and, and come in. Yeah, on any given day we uh, have double our more than double our population when you consider mm -hmm. the school children that are bussed in and all the business people coming mm -hmm. into our community to work. Yes, I heard the stats okay. coming in from the North Shore is 8,800 vehicles a day. Really? Mm -hmm. Coming in. I think I got that right. That's it was just an astronomical coming number. Going or? Possibly. Yeah, I haven't uh, seen a count figure, but uh, it'll be looking at that, I'm sure, more and more as you see uh, amalgamation of some of the services. Mm -hmm. And now we've gone across the bridge with the sewer line, um, you're going to see more the, more people wanting those services. Mm -hmm. And just just before we wrap up, I'll just get a little bit of bookkeeping done here. Uh, <laughs> to begin, uh, Nelson Nightline, this show will be rebroadcast on Friday, May 1st at 11 a.m. <coughs> Excuse me, and Sunday, May 3rd at 8 p.m. The, the same show will be rebroadcast. Uh, our next show, we're going to be looking at tourism, and uh, I think you're going to be away next yes, time. Yes, I right? am. So uh, our man in the street, Mike Ovenello, <laughs> is going to be taking over Mary Ann's spot uh, in two weeks from now to uh, talk about tourism with us. Uh, we also like to hear from you. You can write us a letter with some suggestions on what upcoming shows we should focus on. Do you have any ideas? If you do, the address is care of Shaw Cable, um, Shaw Cable 10, 613 Ward Street, Nelson, BC, V1L 1T2. That, that wraps up the. Uh, I think one of our bookie. callers gave us a good idea is to get Williams back on with the, with some kids and yeah, talk well, through the same issue. We'll, we'll do that again, and so. if, if we can arrange that in the near future, Williams, we'll yeah. do that. Uh, okay. Uh, I'd like to thank both of you for being on with us tonight. You've provided some insight on what's happening out there. Hopefully, we can keep it. Nice and quiet. We want everybody to have fun, but no problems in the streets. We all want to enjoy the lifestyle of Nelson. Well, and just to have cleared up that the growth has not necessarily meant an increase in, in the kind of things we're seeing in the paper. It is a concerted effort to just make the public more aware, I think was an important fact to bring out tonight. Yeah, our, our, our crime has kept up with the growth of mm -hmm. the community, but we haven't had any yeah. huge uh, outbreaks of crime. All right, mm -hmm. again, thank you both. Thank, Thank you. you for having me. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. This is Nelson Nightline. Good night to all of you, and uh, we'll see you again in two weeks. And if you want to see us again on the same show, Friday, Friday morning, is it? <laughs> Friday morning and Sunday night. Hopefully we won't be up against a hockey game in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Wishful thinking.
the birds. This is the music we get to see as the choir chorus wishes. And we make sure that he and the choir staff are there in case of problems. And as the producer, we send that the bird who needs you to add to his wedding routine. Wish us well.
turned to the very powerful Isis death itself from one mountain top to another, and it points to a tragedy from somewhere wider than our own conspiracy theory. So this the theory about the monster that I love you did it.
infrastructure. This is the detail that was done by Clemens at the Falcon and Pearl area. The aforementioned church were religious limits from Minnesota. There were nine stems that were listed in the back in the square front. Minnesota is principally to be quite a many stems of Sweden, as well as this Chicago adjacent infrastructure.
This being the international year of the dog, uh, today in, in throughout the world there was awareness of the dog and these dogs were, as one of the participants, the international year of, of the dog. And we were touring in throughout the world and we have uh, three We are very happy to come to Nelson and perform to you. Uh, we, our former uh, students at the Development Institute of Performing Arts from Lanka, India, now we are all graduated from uh, school for performing arts, and everyone is there, for, as you say, around the world. So we are really happy. Thank you. 
Yeah. 